believe you can see me. So let me go ahead and welcome you to today's webinar. This is Mike Brooks, Mr. Inside Sales. And I apologize for the delay. I know I'm a few minutes late, but I appreciate you all hanging in and joining me for today's webinar on how to build a script playbook. We've got a great program for you today. And I want to give you some pointers so that you can get the most out of today's program. So first of all, grab a pen. Get ready to take some notes because I'm going to be covering some of the most important information that you'll hear in terms of building a script playbook, either for your own personal business or for your team. So make sure and take notes. Also, write down any questions you might have because at the end of this webinar, I'm going to stick around and answer your specific questions. I'm going to give you all the answers that you need from the material you've learned today. So that's number two. And then number three, make sure and stick around to the end because I'm going to be making an offer on a program and a product that I've not made an offer on before. This is going to be a very, very special program. So get ready once again to take some notes. Make sure you get your questions in line. And then let's talk a little bit here now about a scripted playbook and how it can affect your business. In fact, to actually, to actually begin the program, I want to ask you all right here in the very beginning, how many of you actually have a script playbook? How many of you actually know what a script playbook is? How many of you know exactly how to build and then begin using a script playbook for your business? Chances are not many of you and as you'll see as we go through this program, there's a lot here to learn. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk a little bit about what you're going to learn today. First of all, you're going to learn why all professional teams have a playbook. And I'm going to talk about the different types of teams that use a playbook and what it means to their business or team. Second of all, we're going to go into the four essential sections, elements of every successful script playbook. And again, if you already have a playbook, you can compare what you're going to learn today with the sections that need to be in there. And then people are going to say, all right, hey, Mike, you're going to tell us what we need to do, then what? Well, I'm going to tell you how to then build your own script playbook. I'm going to give you some examples of exactly how you can do this for your team. So if you're all ready, and I see that you can here, and see the screen, here we go. Let's talk a little bit about the playbook. Now, I love the NFL. Many of you who follow my weekly easings know that I love to use examples from the NFL. But heck, if I said, hey, let's talk about an NFL playbook, you probably all know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, let's talk about and break down an NFL playbook. Every NFL team has a playbook of scripted plays. And they cover things like the offense. In fact, all offenses follow a very scripted format. In fact, did you know that many teams, when they start a game, they have already scripted out their first 15 plays and practiced them. In fact, they just run the 15 plays that they've already devised. They just run them, and then they see what's going to work and what's not going to work. But every NFL team and offense has a script playbook. Hey, guess what? The defense has a set, a scripted set of plays that they use as well. We're going to break that down, talk about the different situations. But guess what? The special teams have a playbook as well. Now, let's talk about the NFL playbook and why it's so important to the success of a team. The NFL playbook covers specific situations. As an example, on offense, there are specific plays that are written up for every kind of situation that the team might find themselves in. For example, when it's third down and four, and they're inside their opponent's 35-yard line, guess what? There are specific plays for that scenario. In fact, I read an article about the USC college football team. They have a department there, their computer tech department. Guess what they've done? They've taken all of the plays of their opponents. So they've looked at what their opponents do when it's first and 20 inside their own 10, inside their own 30, when it's second and four 
from any point in the field, and they break all of those plays down, and they categorize them so that when the their coaches are examining or preparing for a team, they can say, hey, what does this team tend to do when it's third and five? What do they tend to do when it's third and five on their own 50 or inside their 50? And they then study those plays and give their defense those plays. So in other words, every offensive play, regardless of where it is on the field, hey, they know exactly what's going to work. Same thing for the defense. Guess what? There are special packages based on the player personnel of the opposing team. What's the opposing team going to do? How do you prepare for it? How do you make it work? What's the most effective player package that we can put in? In other words, they have scripted out every single, every single situation the defense is going to run into. Same thing with special teams. Hey, do we punt or do we try that field goal? Coaches have a little a, a little cheat sheet, so to speak, that when the ball is on a certain uh, yardage mark and it's a certain amount of time left and they're down by a certain amount of points, they know. They just look at their scripts and say, hey, in this situation we're, we're going for the field goal. In this situation we're punting. Do we angle punt it? Again, every part of an NFL team has scripted out and put into a playbook their best, most proven to be effective plays. Now, what do they do with that? Guess what? They give it to the players and they teach them how to study and learn every single play in that playbook. In fact, every player gets a copy of the playbook. In fact, if you've ever watched uh, HBO's Hard Knock series, you know that everybody carries their playbook around, and the dreaded thing they, they want to hear is, hey, the coach wants to see you bring your playbook. <laughs> they know they're going to get cut if that happens. But players have to keep their playbooks on them. Many playbooks are on iPads now. And here's what their assignment is. Very simple. You need to study and practice and memorize every single part of this script playbook. And, and here's why. In any game situation, if you have to think about what to do, it's too late. That was Don Shula, the Super Bowl winning coach with the Miami Dolphins. He said, hey, we practice, drill, and rehearse our players on all of our plays. And we make sure that it becomes automatic for these players, that they don't even need to think about how to react in a given game situation. And I love this saying by his. He said, hey, if they need to think about it, it's too late. It's too late. They need to have ingested and memorized their scripts for their plays. Now, here's the other thing. All professionals have playbooks. I mean, if you think about it, how does, a, how does an architect build a house? What does he do? He puts together a script or a diagram, right, of the house. He makes plans for every detail of that house. And in, he, he does that so that the teams, the carpenters, the electricians, the plasterers, they can all work together to build a foundation for that house, a foundation to be successful. And you know what happens if you don't build a proper foundation? <laughs> I love this picture. Yeah, the house crumbles. If there isn't a solid foundation, then your team can't build towards a successful structure and guess what? All teams have it. I don't care if you're a dancer, if you're an actor, if you're a producer, a director trying to build a play or a movie. You have what? A script. All professional teams use playbooks. And I love these two images here. On the left, you've got this runner going through all the other players. He's practicing a run. And guess what? He's practicing a technique. What's the technique? The technique is to hang on to the ball. All the other players stand next to him and try and strip the ball from him. All professional teams use playbooks. And I love this on the right. I can't afford it. Hey, guess what needs to go into your sales playbook? You run into the same situations over and over again. 
and we're going to talk more about that here in a moment. Script books prepare players for the specific situations that they're going to face. And every one of your sales team members are going to be facing a selling situation as well. They need to be prepared. Now here's the other thing. Playbooks also teach players the best techniques that they need to succeed. Now here's one of the best things about all of sales, and in fact any profession really, all salespeople know usually what situation is going to come up next. In other words, we can predict what the objections, what the stalls, what the selling situations are going to be both on the cold call, the prospecting call, and the closing call. We can predict what selling situation is coming up. And because we can predict it, we can then script out the most effective techniques to counter them. We can, we can get the most effective techniques in advance to help our sales players use the best techniques, the most successful techniques to succeed, just like they do here in football. Also, playbooks, script playbooks, allow you, your managers, to coach and to correct their players' pr uh, uh, production and the way they answer objections for the greater production. You need a sales playbook in order to direct and coach your team to success. So does your sales team have a scripted playbook? I, I hate to tell you this, but over 50% of the companies that I work with or more, and this was, we'll talk about some statistics here in a moment, they do not have an organized playbook for their team. But like in sports, a playbook prepares the sales reps for the specific situations they're going to face. It allows you to teach them the best techniques and again, it allows the managers to correct and coach their sales reps to greater production. Having a playbook increases production. I don't know if you're familiar with CSOinsights.com. If not, write that down. Pardon me. But sales, they found, they did a survey across industries, and they found that sales teams that have and follow a scripted sales process average more than 33% in production and revenue. Now just think about how much a 33% increase would mean to you if you're a sales rep and to your team if you're a manager or business owner. How much would that impact your business and your profits? Probably a tremendous amount. Okay, so now let's talk about the four essential elements of your script playbook for your sales team. There are four sections that you need to build. The first one is prospecting and qualifying scripts. Section two is the demo call or the closing scripts. And we're going to talk a little bit about the various parts of a close. Some of your closes may involve two phone calls, one following up. We're going to talk about that here in a moment. The third section is voicemails and emails. Hey, your sales reps probably spend a lot of time sending emails and probably waste a lot of time making up emails or leaving ineffective voicemails. You need to script that part of your sales process out. And here's the, sec the fourth section, a script grading adherence form to measure and coach adherence to your best practice scripts. And this is a, a section that's lacking, I would say, across the board, yet it's the best management tool and training tool you'll ever have. All right, let's dive in here. Number one, the essential elements of prospecting and qualifying scripts. So this is the first part of your script sales playbook. And here's what needs to be in here. Number one, you need to have specific scripts that allow your sales team to get past those gatekeepers and also begin building instant rapport with decision makers. Now, I listen to an awful lot of phone calls that companies send me. I do a lot of training with sales teams, and I listen 
to how the sales reps, number one, attempt to get past gatekeepers. They don't do it very effectively. And if they do get past, here's the part that's lacking right off the bat. Making a true connection with a prospect from the very beginning. You know, you, you think it would be pretty easy to, to make that connection, but the problem is most sales reps are so anxious to begin pitching and dumping information on a prospect, they immediately sound like salespeople. They turn the prospect off. They don't develop any kind of a connection which would allow them to leverage information later in the call. So your script playbook needs to put rapport building statements in there, questions that put the prospect at ease. And that's the very first part of your prospecting and qualifying script. Next off, you need a brief value statement and engaging questions to explore a possible fit. When I say a brief value statement, I don't mean a paragraph of how great your product is and how much time and energy and money it's going to save someone. I mean a brief value statement and then a very quick engaging question and more questions to explore a possible fit, and here's the important thing, to get your prospects talking to you. Again, you don't want to just talk at them. Then you need complete qualifying questions. And this is something else that's lacking. Once again, most salespeople are so anxious or desperate to get somebody into a demo or to, to, to go into a closing situation, they'll put anybody in their pipeline that allows them to, without fully understanding their real buying motives and or objections, and the other fundamentals of qualifying, like who the decision makers are, what the decision process is like, how long that takes, who the possible competition is. And these are issues that need to be explored, and they can be explored very easily without interrogating anyone. They can be explored very naturally if, once again, we built that rapport in the beginning. But all of these things need to be in your prospecting and qualifying script. And then, of course, you need rebuttals to brush off subjections and stalls, things like, well, just go ahead and email me some information, or, hey, you know, I'm, we're, we're not interested at this time, or we've already got a company that does that, or, yeah, we've tried that before, it doesn't work. I'll tell you something, nothing deflates a salesperson more than being uh, brushed off or blown off with the same old objections that, by the way, prospects have been using forever. If they don't know how to effectively handle them, it just demoralizes them as they continue to make prospecting calls. And that's one of the reasons so many sales reps have call reluctance. Who wants to continue to hear, I'm not interested? How do you overcome that? How do you, how do you teach your reps to be effective at that without sounding like a salesperson? These are the things that you, as a manager or a business owner or a director or a VP of sales, you need to make sure your team has these effective responses so that they can not only build that rapport and generate qualified leads, but also keep their attitudes up because they're not going to keep getting brushed off and blown off. So that's the very first element of a proven scripted playbook. Now, here's the essential element number two, the demo call or the closing scripts. If you go in, if the second part of your sales process is to present your product and service and then close that sale, then this is the second part of your scripted playbook. Let's break this down. Number one, you need to requalify the prospect at the beginning of the call. This is a step that is oftentimes overlooked, and it could save you and your sales team hours a week pitching the wrong person or pitching someone who actually is not qualified or has changed their minds. You need to find a way to requalify briefly in the beginning, once again get buy-in as to their buying motives, what's important, before you go into your pitch. So that's the first element of your closing script. The next one is throughout your, your presentation, you need to put in proper tie-downs to build a yes momentum. 
And I don't mean tired sales tie-downs like, and that would be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, things like that. that. Those are old tired salesy statements that actually turn prospects off more than build a yes momentum. But you need to come, by the way, if you're looking for some specific ones, you should visit my blog, my inside sales blog. My last e-zine was about how to rewrite tired old tie-downs and make them more effective. So you can find a whole list of those free on my website. But you need to be able to equip your sales team with very good tie-downs, real-world tie-downs that begin building a yes momentum. If somebody asked me, what do you think the biggest problem with, a, with, with salespeople's closes are these days, I would tell them it's lack of building a yes momentum and getting buy-in throughout the process. And what happens at the end is the salesperson just springs and asks for the order, but there's been no buy-in, there's been no rapport building, or very little or the wrong kind, and at the end, the prospect says, well, let me think about it. That's very frustrating as well. Second of all, you need some rapport building statements to judge how the close is going. Now, here's one of my favorites. Go ahead and write this down. About one-third of the way out through my presentation or any presentation, you ought to stop and say to your prospect, well, John, you know, I've been giving you a lot of information so far. Just out of curiosity, uh, how is this sounding to you so far? Or what do you think about this so far? You need to stop the presentation and throw that out there. Let your prospect tell you what they're thinking. In inside sales, when you don't have the ability to see their expression, you don't have all those visual cues, you had better put in some rapport building statements so that your sales team knows how it's going so they can adjust accordingly. Next, you need some trial closes in there as well. And you all know what a trial close is. Uh, a trial close is where you're not asking for the order, but you're asking in a soft kind of way how it's going or what they might do if they had to make a decision now. There are different kinds of trial closes that can be put in, is inserted into your demo based on how long the demo is, what kind of buy-in you've been getting. But your closing demo script needs to have some trial closes. In addition, it also needs rebuttals to objections, stalls, and put-offs. And hey, when they get to the end, you better have all of your team members trained on the objection. Well, you know, let me go ahead and show this to my regional manager. Let me go ahead and show this to, hey, if your sales reps don't know how to properly handle that objection or stall, then you're going to get a lot of, bit, lot of uh, deals that are in the pipeline that usually don't close. So, you, again, you need to put in this demo and closing scripts the rebuttals to objections. Also, commitment for the next calls and ways to overcome smoke screens. I can't tell you how many sales teams I listen to, and at the end of the call they say, well, uh, well I'll, I'll go ahead and get back to you next week. Uh, do you think Tuesday or Wednesday would be okay? That's not the way to end the call. There's no commitment on either side. There's no agreement as to what's going to be done. Yeah, it's usually they, the prospect ends it with a smoke screen. You have to equip your team to get over that. And then, by the way, if you have additional closes that come up, in other words, if you end the demo and now you need to get back to someone, next calls in the closing sequence. They can't start with, hey, I'm just following up. Uh, I, like I said I would, I'm just, just calling you back. No, you have to give your team specific closing questions and actions to move towards a closed deal. And you also need to teach your team techniques to advance the sale or, in fact, to move on if somebody is not going to do the deal. All of these specific scripted techniques need to be in your sales playbook. Now, again, going back to the NFL football analogy, it's kind of like, hey, if we get in the red zone, right, we're, 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 on, we're inside the 20-yard line, guess what? All the plays change, don't they? And they have to change because suddenly you don't have 100 yards to deal with, right? 
you're in a much more compact space, so the coverage is going to be closer. All of the plays within the 20 need to change. There's going to be different personnel packages. The defense on the other side of the team is going to change. It's the same thing here. As you get closer to the end of the close, your scripts need to change. Your approach needs to change. This all needs to be scripted out in your closing script playbook. Okay, let's talk about that third element, voicemails and emails. Hey, if you leave voicemails, have you standardized the most effective message? That, that, that's a huge question. Or are your team members saying the same things? Are they able to concentrate on the delivery of their voicemail rather than the, um, uh, and uh, call me back and they can reach me at 872-439-7243. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to play that recording back 12 times or write that phone number down. Hey, you need to teach your team how to use and leave effective voicemails. How about emails? Do they, does your team send a lot of emails? Have you standardized them as much as you can to make them effective? Are you using the rules of effective emails? Are you keeping them short, to the point, limiting the size of the paragraphs, putting the prospect's name in the subject line? These are some of the things that you can do and think about in advance to make them effective. Hey, are you measuring the response rate for your voicemails and emails? And here's a, a very important one. Do you have a winning high percentage email for prospects who have disappeared or are not getting back to you? Do you have a way for those prospects to actually respond to you more than 60 to 65% of the time? If not, you need to develop that technique. I've written about it in many of my easings. You, again, can search on my blog for should I stay or should I go. I get a 65% response rate, and so do my clients, by having that voicemail, or I'm sorry, that email. So you and your team need to be prepared with this type of, a, of your script sales playbook these kinds of emails and voicemails, once again, specific to the situations they're running into. Now, here's the fourth element of your script playbook. It's your script grading adherence form. Now, every professional sports team watches game and practice film to assess their players. Do you? Hey, if you've read any of my material or articles, you know that I'll tell you right now, the quickest thing, the fastest, the most effective thing you can do to double your sales and your close rate is to record your phone calls and then grade them and see how close, closely you are adhering to a proven script or a proven playbook. What I recommend you do and this is the fourth part of your script playbook, is you have to develop what I call a script grading form that allows you to access and measure adherence to your script playbook. All of you managers, business owners, VPs, directors, and individual sales reps, you need to be listening to your phone calls, grading your adherence to your best practice scripts. Are your reps following the best practices on each of their calls? Because if they're not, then guess what? Having them make more phone calls only means they're going to make more calls that are not as effective as they should be. In other words, if your team members are not making and using using and, and uh, effective techniques on each call, then guess what? The next call is going to be as bad as the one before it. You need to make sure they're practicing the best techniques. And here's the best thing of all using a script playbook. You will develop the most impactful coaching and training and mentoring opportunities for your team. Once again, if you think about pro sports, pro football, there are coaches. What are they doing in the classrooms during the week? They're sitting down with their teams. They're showing what's going on with the team they're about to play. They're analyzing their, old, their own performance. Then they go out on the practice field and they practice those proven successful techniques. Then they come back and they watch film from practice to see how they're doing. That's what a coach's job is, is to teach proper 
adherence to the best practice approach. And that's what your script grading adherence form is going to do for your team members. It's the essential element number four of your overall script playbook, your script sales playbook. All right, now let's talk about how you're going to do this yourself. Hang on a moment. Now you, now you know what all the elements are. Here's how you build your own scripted playbook. There are several ways to do it. Number one, listen to your top 20% and write down the things that they say. Turn what and how they say things into scripts. This is how I built my very first scripted playbook. I remember when I was a bottom 80% producer all those years ago, there was a guy named Steve. He was the top producer in the office. This was the guy walking around in $1,000 suits, driving the beautiful Porsche Carrera. And boy, I was struggling. He was making 20 times the money I was making. And I wondered, how did, how did he do it? So what I did was I took a cassette tape player. Back in those days, we had cassettes. I snuck next to his cubicle. And when he picked up the phone to qualify, I pressed record and held the recorder up. And when he went on to close, I put rec I hit record and held the recorder up. At night, I went home and I transcribed everything he said. And then I compared what he was saying to what I was saying. Guess what? There was a world of difference, a world of difference. If you have a top 20% player or a top 20% part of your team that is doing much better than the other part, record them. Write down what they're saying, and then turn what and how they say things into scripts that you can then adapt for your entire team later. That's the fastest, easiest way to begin building a script playbook. Number two, record what other reps are saying now, and then adjust or correct or improve their technique. So in other words, this is a great learning experience as well for your sales team. If you've got a bunch of sales reps out there who are saying a lot of different things, you're going to want to record those, write those down, and then correct them. In other words, take the basics of what they're saying and then turn them into better proven responses. To, you're going to want to correct them and then turn and then hand those scripts back out and obviously begin recording adherence to your best practice approach. Number three, this is a lost art, man, but it is so effective. Shop your competition. Call them. Listen to their pitches and adapt them to your selling situation. We used to do this all the time in the old days, and I still do it now because it's very effective. Hey, your competition out there who is selling the same product or service as you are, they'll have top 20% producers as well. Call them. Shop them. Listen to how they pitch you. Uh, com uh, comp uh, competitors do this all the time. People from Best Buy go into Circuit City. They listen to how they're pitched. Other companies call other companies. They li listen to their customer service. That's how you can learn and improve. Don't be afraid to do this. It's a great way to pick up some new techniques you never thought about, techniques that others have already perfected and are using successfully right now. Hey, football teams do this all the time. Why not you? Hey, here's another one. Invest in scripted materials from books and websites and adapt them to fit your product or service. If you don't want to reinvent the wheel, you know what? You don't have to. There's some great books out there on scripts. I happen to have written a book called The Ultimate Book of Phone Scripts. You can find it on Amazon.com, uh, The Complete Book of Phone Scripts. I've developed much of this material for you, and so have others. Hey, take those, adapt them to your product or service, and develop your own scripted playbook. Here's another one. Hold sales meetings and role play with each rep. Record and adapt them into scripts. Many of your sales reps have some great responses, proven, successful responses that work in your selling situation. Why not mine the gold that is already in your room? And if you're an individual sales rep, grab the top 20% producer, take him or her out to lunch and pick their brains. Bring your recorder, bring your iPhone, turn the recorder on and listen to what they have to say. If you do that, 
you're going to come away with a tremendous amount of sales techniques. You can easily adapt, start using tomorrow to be better at what you do. Okay, let's talk about a summary here. Every professional team uses a playbook. And once again, I don't care if you're a, a dancer, a professional choreographed dancer on a stage, or if you're trying to put a Broadway show together, every movement, every word is scripted out. So it's the same with sports. It's the same with building a home. It's the same with top sales uh, companies and teams across the world. They have invested and built a successful playbook. Scripting out your sales process is what your playbook to success is all about. If you're in sales, then I'll tell you now, every part of your sales cycle can be scripted. It must be scripted if you want to succeed. Two, your script playbook must include the four essential sections we've just spoken about right here. It must include those four essential sections. And number four, invest in building your playbook by recording your top 20%, shopping your competition, or taking advantage of professional script books or services. And I guarantee you now, if you do this, you will make so much more money. Remember what CSO Insights has found? Sales teams that haven't followed a scripted sales process average more than 33% in production and revenue. And by the way, the clients that I work with have proved what CSOinsights.com has found. You can immediately improve your production, the confidence of your reps, your bottom line production, your profit to your company and your business by doing what all professionals have done. And by the way, if, you, if I've convinced you of the need to have a professional script book, then I've done my job today. OK, now here's, a, here's an easy way to do this. I have a program called How to Build a Multi-Million Dollar Inside Sales Team. It sells for $1,995 for the first three companies. Today, I'm going to give you this product for just $15.95. I mean, it's like giving you four $100 bills. This program will allow you to do exactly what I've just talked about right now, which is to build a comprehensive script playbook. In fact, more importantly, it starts with building the outline, and here's the important thing, the outline of that, uh, of that uh, I'm just writing, writing this link here for you, I'm going to just send this link over. It starts by helping you build the outline of your sales process. This is the basis of your script playbook. In other words, you need to have a best practice approach and make sure that all of the elements in each stage of your sales process are there. In your cold calling, you have to make sure that all of your all of your qualifiers are in there. You have to, ha again, all the things I've talked about, prepare them for all of the objections they get. So number one, the first part of this program teaches you how to define your sales process. It gives you a sample four-step sales process and it allows you to identify and define the benchmarks at each step. And this is often missing, but it's crucial. You need to know if that lead is fully qualified. How are you going to know that without benchmarks? This program gives you all those benchmarks helps you develop a common language for all of your team. And then more importantly, this is important as well, developing your training program. Now here's the important thing. How do you, my, my assistant just came to me and said I need to redo this link here. So let me go ahead and put this in here for you. Hang on for just a moment, www.mrinsidesales dot com forward m management training there you go so now that link ought to work for you this is why we have assistants <laughs> they test our work right but here's here's part two of this program developing your training program when I say a training program in this instance I mean your script playbook how do you turn 
your defined sales process into not only your trained company training program, but into your script book. So what I do here in this second part is I break down each call, your prospecting, cold calling, closing, follow-up, every part of it. And I teach you how to develop those scripts. In fact, there's a CD here that lists the scripts for each section. You could simply plug them into your sales cycle and adapt them for your product or service. I help prepare your reps for each of the sales obstacles they're going to get, handling objections, and much, much more. Now here's the thing, part three is how to manage and coach adherence to your script playbook. I give you powerful monitoring, coaching techniques, several script grading forms, techniques on motivation that work. I give you everything you need to develop this entire process. And then here's that bonus CD I talked about. I've already written all the scripts for you. I give you a complete qualifying checklist you can put into your process. Word-for-word -word scripted openings, word-for-word -word initial resistance scripts, closing scripts, best practice hiring ads, interview questions. In this product here, you're going to get everything you need as a business owner, director, or inside sales manager to build and scale a multi-million dollar producing inside sales team. You're going to get everything you need. Okay, so it's all right there for you for just $1,595, the first three companies only. This is where you go. I've gone ahead and sent that link to you. MrInsideSales.com, capital M, management, capital T, training. And you have to use the coupon code SPECIAL while you're checking out. And then you have to make sure and click recalculate to get that $1,595 price for you. Now, again, if you own a business, if you're an inside sales manager and you have a team, ask yourself what a 33% increase in sales will mean to you and your company. It's probably a lot more than $1,595. Oh, by the way, one last thing before we go to questions. I also work and coach one-on-one -on -one business owners and managers, and I will write along with you a complete script playbook myself. And I've been doing this for over 25 years. I have many of my clients call me the wordsmith because I can develop real-world situations, scripts, and techniques for your team. So if you're interested in doing it one-on-one, -on -one, by all means, contact me at the end of this call. You can reach me at Mike at Mr. Inside Sales. Dot com. Okay, we, we have a lot of questions here, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll back down. And, okay, I'm going to start answering these. Before I do, I'm going to just go ahead and stop this recording. It gets a little long after that if I don't. So thanks for joining me today. If you're listening to this recording, hang on for just a moment.